us. And I've got it here. It's called Parasite. And the name of it kind of describes what it's for. So welcome, Sean and Ty. How are you guys? Amazing. Doing great. Glad, <laughs> glad to be here. Glad to, to jump in and see you again. And uh, yeah, really just want to share whatever we can to get people to understand, you know, what this product's all about and kind of the environment that we, in the world we live in and why it affects all of us and, and how you can kind of help yourself. Awesome. Well, we are really curious about getting some more information on this. I know you have some slides, so I will let you go ahead and give us, tell us what we need to know about parasites, because it's such an <laughs> interesting topic that we don't talk about enough. <laughs> it, yes, it really is. And in the past, it was talked about a lot more. And I think because as a society, we did a lot more farming, we were around animals more. And so most people that owned a farm or, ha or were around animals would know to deworm their pets. It was a thing, but we didn't realize we needed to deworm ourselves. <laughs> and we got away from eating a lot of the things that can get rid of parasites. So it's, it's not a known thing. So we really need a really good thing to be able to reach for. And that's why we created it. And I'll let Sean go into what makes ours a little bit more unique and different. But the parasites themselves, in case you don't know what they are, I wanted to at least focus on three of kind of the top ones. There's, there's a ton out there. You know, whether you're in a pond swimming, there's going to be other kind. But I wanted to focus on pinworms, hookworms, and flukes so you could at least get an idea of how we get them and kind of a little scare factor because you do need to know because people are like, that's not me. I don't live on a farm or I don't eat sushi. Well, you're still going to be exposed. And that's the thing I want people to realize everybody needs to do this right. product once in a while. You want me to talk about our little process now or later on? Uh, you can do it whenever you like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let, let's just, I'm going to, I'm going to come to that at, towards the end. Right. Let's just dive in, you know, obviously. And I'll go through these quick because yeah. one, I don't want to gross you out, but it's kind of like the monsters inside of me. If anybody's ever watched those shows in the past and there are weird things that live inside of us and some things can be good and some things can be bad. But the word parasite itself means it's living off of another organism and we just don't want to be good hosts and with that being said, it would be like having a house guest that you just keep feeding and you're like, oh, is your bed comfortable? Can I get you anything else? But yet you're like, I really want this person to leave. Well, then you have to stop creating an environment for that person to want to keep staying there. And so the they're opportunistic. So parasites are going to live off of you if you keep giving them what they love. So that's one thing. So well, diet is going to be important. But also but, avoiding getting them is a little bit important. But the pinworms are you kind of you kind of associate that with or you hear more like with kids. A lot with kids. You know, from school or whatever and being around other people or even in your own house. Right. I mean, but you hear it oftentimes with the kids. With the well, children. touching everything, sharing toys, then you're picking up the toys. Everything goes in their mouth. Um for adults, the way to think about it, because you're like, well, I'm not a kid anymore, but we are. A lot of people will, <laughs> if I had a pen here, they chew on their pen, they chew on their nails. And these critters live in those type of environments and they spread really, really easy. A good way to know if a child has pinworms or even an adult is because you get a little bit of an itchy hiney. And that's how you can know because they kind of rear their ugly head in the evening. And so you'll get more itchy throughout the evening. So that's one little way of telling, but a lot of times different parasites, they don't let you know they're even there. They want yeah. to survive without ever making you sick. You don't know. So a lot of diseases will be out there saying you have X, Y, and Z as a disease. Really, it wasn't a disease. It was a worm that created the issue for that part of your body. And you can be misdiagnosed is my right. point. And then the egg, the whole process of. Which man, is so disgusting. It, of laying eggs and, <laughs> and those eggs. Well, first of all, you just touch, like you said, you're touching things and they can, they survive. They survive. You know, you've got on here, you know, on our slide, we've got the bedding and clothing and toys and things like that. But it's just 
kind of freaky deaky to think about. They're having they're hatching eggs, man. They're having eggs, and those those eggs are kind of maturing just with a couple few weeks. And now and that's all- the other thing. They're fast. They're fast. And you, and you don't think so. Um, and you can go to the next slide if you want, Chelsea. Chelsea's on here helping us with the slides. Thank you. And then hookworms, what makes them a little bit different, and the reason they get their name is their mouths. <laughs> it's crazy to think you have this little creature in there with a, a little mouth. But if you zoom in and Google this word, they look like something from horror movies like that my kids used to watch called Tremors. <laughs> and it's like they've got these hooks and they're grabbing onto your intestines and they're making them, your intestines bleed. You can become anemic. There's all these other things that you may go to the doctor and they may be like, oh, you're anemic. So you're thinking, oh, I'm anemic. Well, really, it's because these little critters are making you bleed. And so there's all kinds of stuff. They also will survive a lot on your protein. So you can be then protein deficient and they they move around. So and they want to survive. So even when you go in and start killing them, they make more of themselves so they don't die because they want to Mm. keep living. So they will they will have babies. And which is why when I talk about actually taking our parasite product it's you're gonna have to hit it a couple times because even once you get rid of say a few of the adults there's different life cycles and a lot of people believe it's you know by the moon follow the moon and do these parasite cleanses by the moon i don't know all i know is i try to rotate and do it as much as i can especially when i travel and i'll kind of go into that towards the end but do you want to say well no just kind of the environment is it's kind of freaking me out a couple of years ago, Ty and I went to Burning Man. If anyone's familiar with Burning Man. It's amazing. <laughs> I just started thinking about, there's a lot of stuff going on out at Burning Man. <laughs> Burning Man's amazing. <laughs> so, you got to do it know, once in your life. Whether they're hookworms, pinworms, like, oh, man. They just brought back that. I don't, man, now you're making me, I don't want to think about that. I'm going to just keep <laughs> well, taking the and dropper. These ones are, they're going to be more popular in, in warmer, warmer, warmer climates. not worms, warmer Warmer climates, climates yeah. So that might humid happen, areas, which is where everyone travels when they want to go somewhere tropical. And well, then you come back thinking, oh, why do I not feel yeah, 100 get, percent? You get into these other countries or environments or whatever. And, and, and the sanitation is not, not the, the same. same. And it's it's just I don't know, man. It, it That's why you hear these stories all the time. Oh, I traveled to blah, blah, blah. And I ended up getting sick or in the hospital because I picked up this thing? what this thing, whatever it was. And that's part of it. I mean, we're just. You know, they talk about washing hands, right. at least in the bathroom. But a lot of it comes from your skin, your feet. Yep. It, you could be, it's it's very hard to avoid. Um, we're not talking about bacteria here. We're talking about yeah. actual parasites and worms. But it's very hard to avoid things that are everywhere, in our air, in our soil, on our food. So you are surrounded and bombarded by things all well, the time, bacteria, worms, the parasites. They're kind of like little thieves too, because they're getting in there. They yeah, can, they're they very can, opportunistic. They, they can take your nutrients. You they know, do. And, and people can feel tired or whatever, lethargic, cramping. Stuff. And there's a lot of different things that- That may be right? the only thing they notice is that they're like, man, I've gone to every doctor. They can't figure out what's wrong with me, but I just feel- tired i feel exhausted yeah and a lot of that can be you have a parasite and they're really good at hiding so maybe you even gave a stool sample to that doctor and they still didn't pick it up because it wasn't in that portion of the stool sample but they still could be in there so there's a lot of different variables but you can go to the next fun little parasite Mm -hmm. chelsea (laughs) and flukes flukes are crazy uh they can be in your liver even which is nutty and they go into a lot of the ducks um, around the gallbladder and everything. And they're very good at hiding and hijacking your body. And yeah. this is one of the ones that definitely can create other issues down the road because they go undetected by your immune system a lot of times. So they can stay in there for a really long time without somebody knowing they're there. And then you could get diagnosed with even cirrhosis of the liver. And you're like, well, wait a minute, I've never had alcohol in my life. How is this possible? And it could have been from a trip you took 10 years prior where you got these flukes and didn't even know that they've been inhabiting your body. So it's. Well, and it's like water, right? You contaminated water or your, I mean, you mentioned sushi earlier. Oh gosh. I mean, raw, you know, eating, eating, 
raw fish even or sometimes un, or half un, cooked or, or undercooked yeah right, you don't know undercooked food um which is hard it's difficult because i like raw yeah right no that's what i teach is <laughs> yeah, of course. Raw food, but. so but yeah you can pick these things up and it's you you just don't know and that's it's just yeah. i think such a big thing that we've always taught in health is prevention and Preventing things before they happen, yes, but preventing things before they come too big of an issue where now you've got something you're, it's not good that you really have to deal with to hope that you can get repaired, that the body can kind of fix itself or put things back the way they're supposed to be. And so, I don't know, when I think about like the parasite cleanse, everyone needs to use this, you know, we'll talk about when and how, but and it's harmless. So. And, it, and it's harmless. And, and it's such <laughs> to us, it's harmless to them. They don't like yes, it. Yes. It's, it's prevention, but not just prevention of ever having it. Cause pretty much everyone has some form of these parasites, but it's really preventing the next step of where it gets worse, where it causes something that's a more serious. Well, and they're not detected by the naked eye. So you may look at your water and go, oh, my water looks clean. There's nothing in it. And there, there still could be the babies yeah. that'll then come into your body and then hatch. And the other thing is you might think, well, okay, well, well I only drink bottled water or this or that. But think about when you're <laughs> even, no matter what country you live in, you're going to have maybe an iced tea. Maybe you're going to have a cup of coffee. Maybe you're going to have lemonade. They're using whatever water is available to provide you with that a lot of the times. So whether they've cleaned the machines out, what's living in the machine that they're using to get that from, they're using generic water to wash your vegetables. And even in the U.S., right now, a big popular thing, and we lived in Arizona for many years, and I saw this a lot, is reclaimed water. So that's human feces and urine and everything that goes to the plants, and then they clean it, and then they will use that water because they want to conserve our fresh drinking water. They use yeah. that on golf courses and in all of the grass, little, just, little grassy just, just areas. So Guess where your dogs go, and then they, your dogs come in the house with you. Guess where your kids are playing? It's all you know, barefoot or yeah. touching it, and you're playing on this reclaimed water that still could be contaminated. And a lot of that's, you know, things are spread yeah. that way. So it's it's in more places than you think, even though you think you're like, well, I live in the city or whatever. But you can go on to the next <laughs> next slide so we yeah. can stay on track. And that goes. To goes, our... It goes to the detox, right? The parasite fluid. And, you know, we talk about this extraction. If, you, if you're not familiar with what we do when we extract plants or roots or fungi, mushrooms, whatever, I just, I want you to know, I can't reiterate this enough. There's something very unique to what we do, and that's how we extract something. Meaning, since we don't use chemicals and things like this when we extract, and we're always taking, you know, organic matter of something and we're extracting that. So obviously very clean plant or whatever material it is that we're working with. But because of the extraction process, we get to leave Mother Nature alone and keep things whole. We're big believers, whole, whole food, whole flower, whole plant. When you have something that is whole, less is more. You don't need as much because it's all there, all pieces to the puzzle. So we you know, not doing anything different when it comes to the parasite fluid. It's the same concept, the same thing. And that's why we're truly microdosers in the products that we make in, in little tincture or dropper bottles. Again, no one else does this, right? Everyone else uses bigger bottles typically because they're using alcohol or something or a carrier oil of some sort to fill that bottle up. Or even CO2. Or, or CO2, whatever it is, but we don't do that. And so again, we, we stay true to who we are and what we do. And this is a true microdose um, when you're when you're looking at these ingredients. And we can let's dive into the, yeah, dive let's into the, ingredients, the ingredients, Chelsea. So you want to go warm words yeah. first? So there it is. one of the things you'll notice when we go through each slide and talk about what's in the product itself, Sean just talked about we like to keep things whole. So there's a lot of components and chemical components to every plant out there. And so these plants were chosen based on the fact that they've been known for a long time to kill parasites or to kill 
the babies, which is also just as important, or even the eggs, you know, in general. So, but you'll notice a chemical component in each one that is maybe the, the trigger that kills them. And that could be a tannin from, the, from that plant. It could be an alkaloid from that plant. So there is, each plant will have its own chemical component that has been proven based on science to target the parasites. And so we mixed a blend together with the patented extraction process. So you're getting the best wormwood out there. So you're getting the best wormwood, then you're extracting the best wormwood, but you're also keeping all the chemical components. So right now science may only point pinpoint one, Isolate but we things, might yeah. find out later, 10 years from now, well, the reason the whole wormwood worked to kill parasites was from a different chemical component that science hadn't figured out yet. And so you can rest assured that you're getting everything in the formula that you need to get. And wormwood has been known forever yeah. to be like, as you see, antimicrobial, anti, well, a lot of these are going to be anti-inflammatory in general, but antiparasitic is the key to this formula. But you can go to the next one. And barberry root. Yeah. So you guys probably have seen in the news and kind of out there something called berberine. And like I was just saying about chemical components of each thing, that is a big hype chemical component of the barberry root. And that is one of the chemical components that, and when I say chemical, it's plants. You know, it's the plant you know, essence not a synthetic, and not made synthetic in a lab chemical, right? Kind of thing. It's the natural, you know, powerhouse of the plant that is going to target the parasites. In this case, berberine from the barberry root has not been extracted. It's the whole root with the berberine intact that is going to go after the parasites. But you can go to the next one. And then black walnut hulls. Mm. So this one we actually have on there that it's the jug loan and you'll be able to see a lot of that. That's one of the chemicals that is the main one that's targeting the parasites. So with us being a microdose, a lot of the other companies, you'll see that that could be a problem for people, the, the jug loan. And with ours, because it's microdose, we don't ever hear any complaints about anyone taking this product other than they get rid of parasites. <laughs> so it's, it's a very safe product to take. So if you have children that you think might have parasites, maybe they traveled with you, maybe they were playing in, you know, a reclaimed water park, you know, or, or they're crawling on the ground. You can put a little bit into what they're drinking even because it's very strong. When you take the product, you're like, whoa, okay. And it's very heavy clove forward, which we'll talk about next. But that immediate reaction that you have when you put it on your tongue is the same reaction the parasites have. It's like, whoa, they don't, they don't like it. And that's what you want. And we've gotten away from bitters in our diet. So it's almost that really bitter yeah. component that kind of shocks the system, but they really do not like to live in that environment. I mean, just the pets, like we don't think, stop and think again, just, oh, I picked up parasites from my- Oh, your the, cat, the petting your cat. The and dog or dogs, whatever it is. Anything, someone else's dog that you pet or let them lick you. <laughs> Which know. I don't want you to stop doing that. I don't no. want you to stop walking barefoot on the ground because you need to get grounded. But then you're, you might be worried about hookworms. You know, like, oh, I just walked barefoot. So now do I have hookworms? And it's so not, you, you can't about, live in a bubble. No. You cannot live in a bubble. So you just want to make sure that you're doing all these preventative things. After you've done something, I, like also, I don't want you to never go out for sushi. Go out for sushi. Enjoy sushi. And then maybe that night, do a few drops. You can add it into your water because it's water compatible. Add it into your water and take a sip before you go to bed. And maybe do that for a few days after you've had sushi. Like you're, there's many different ways to take this product. And I can go into that in more detail in a minute. Next, next. All right. Cloves. So here's the cloves, which I already kind I remember, of pre-started talking about. When it. you're, you remember being young? I do wait, remember being young. When, I am young. I'm young. <laughs> We're still young, but everybody like smoking clove cigarettes and. Yeah. I don't know if that helped, but. I don't know if that helped. <laughs> but I do remember I think that was the hear, only cigarette I enjoyed the smell of. I will say that. <laughs> I like the taste of cloves. I, so some people will, some people won't. Very strong. Usually if you're 
kind of put back by the flavor of cloves or dandelion or anything like that, it usually means that you may have a parasite because when they're gone, you may not have that same reaction to a very strong taste mm. because they don't like it. So they tell you, Ooh, get this out. You don't like it because they want to live. So it's a very good indication. Back in the day, they would have people like chew on dandelion leaves and things. And if they had a reaction, then they knew that they had parasites. Yeah, but it's known to kill the parasites and the eggs. I mean, that's... Cloves are amazing. I think that truly is why they would stick it all in your holiday ham because pig and ham was a very parasite ridden animal. So it would it was crazy as far as how many parasites were in pigs. And I think maybe that's why a lot of cultures would say it's an unclean meat. And that was because of parasites and because of something called trichinosis back in the day. And it's very hard to 100% kill through heat all of the parasites that live in there. So, and like you can see the chemical component component here is the eugenol and that's going to go in and also kill the eggs. So it's really good to cycle through taking a, the parasite product because you wanna make sure once the adults are dying off and they leave their eggs behind, that we're gonna get in there and make sure that the eggs don't then proliferate and grow and, and take over your body. Cause they can be in your bloodstream, uh, lungs, liver, colon, uh, small intestines. Yeah. I mean, they're really, they really can wreak some havoc. What's next, Chelsea? That's the finale. <laughs> there it is, the finale. So the, the protocol for all this stuff and you know, it can talk, vary, but let's yes. talk about this. Yeah, because people do it a little, a little differently sometimes. And you know, I'm a few week guy on mine, like a, oh yeah, for you, traveling, we travel know, a like lot. To, and, and, you know, four drops being that microdose, these are little, little drops. I mean, it's, it doesn't take a lot. And that's, you know, I will, I just want to remind everyone, if it's so strong and they had to put it in their water, they could. Yes. Right. But especially for kids, but straight, straight it onto the tongue. It'll, always it'll just always be better. And it's just going to dissipate. You don't have to hold it because it's, it's because we're the way we extract, it's just going to, the absorption so high. It's much higher than take, taking any other type of uh, dropper bottle or tincture bottle because there's the, it's not oil. You know, we're no, mostly, our exactly. body's mostly fluids, water and fluids. So it's going to absorb quickly. Yeah. I mean, but go ahead. You want to walk them through the. There's the, just the only way that the really is variables is because people's lives are, they, we live in variables. So if we're traveling, even if I just kind of did one of these cleanses and I, you know, did it for a few weeks. And then all of a sudden I have this surprise trip. I have to go on, even if it's in the U S you're touching everything, you're eating in airport restaurants. You're just doing things that you wouldn't normally do. You're not in your controlled home environment with all your perfect, whatever you're trying to do at home. So I would actually still continue to do the cleanse, even if it was back to back because I'm traveling and I don't want to bring any more in my body and, and, have them grow. Yeah. So sometimes I may even take them back to back, but ultimately two weeks, three weeks is what you'll read all over the internet because you don't want to overdo it, you know, two to three weeks on, and then you'll get off because now all the critters that might be hiding from you attacking yeah. them, they'll, it gives them a chance to come back out and then you hit them again. Let's, so you can go off of it for like 10 days and then hit it again. Let's clarify to where you know, I know on this slide it says like no sugar and, you know, light on meat. Well, and, we're trying and, not and to keep feeding and veggies. creating yeah. an environment for them to so stick it's around. It's not like, it, look, it, we're not, that, we're not, not, we're not perfect. No. Don't expect anyone to be perfect out there. I just don't want them to take that verbiage. And think they don't, they shouldn't do oh, it. I can't do sugar because I'm taking this parasite. No, it, let, let's just be right. real. Let's be real. You're still going to use it. Yeah, you shouldn't it. be doing gonna... it and sugar anyway. <laughs> I'll listen to you. <laughs> Oh, it's just, uh, it creates insulin resistance and a million other gazillion do it things, anyways. cancer. I mean, I can go Sh on and on, sugar but I love sugar. So <laughs> I'm preaching to myself here. So you just want to be mindful that at least yeah. when you're cleansing, you're not going to go 
drink alcohol every night and have cookies before you go to bed. It's just, you're going to kind of defeat the purpose a little bit. So, cause you're going to be feeding that, that every bad environment. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I would try to just have a better diet during this time yeah, because it's a good time to just naturally cleanse yep. everything, cleanse the colon, cleanse yeah. your gallbladder, cleanse your liver, everything. It's amazing how you feel too over time. You, you should feel you, lighter. You, you start feeling a little bit different, a little bit better. More energy. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely more energy. And, and here's the other thing that I think is really kind of gross, <laughs> but looking but, in your poop, <laughs> you kind of maybe want to start checking your poop out, especially when you're using this. You may not see a lot of anything. I mean, but you also probably see a lot of stringy, a lot, a lot of the parasites that we mentioned almost look like little pieces of string. And so if they're larger, you may visually see them. And that just means they've been in there a lot longer. And you would definitely do another cleanse if you were visually seeing anything. But also they can come out your feet. They could come out of people's eyeballs. I mean, they're, it's the craziest thing out of skin. So yeah, you, when they're in an environment they don't like, they just want they, out. They want out. So it depends where they're at in your body. Um, which is really, that's why it's a good time, one, to eat better, but to sweat. Yeah. Go jogging, go to the sauna, get a massage, do whatever you can do to get the lymph moving and get all toxins out at the same time. Yep. I think that's it. That's it. Slides. Well, there might be, is there one more? I don't know. Leave that up to Chelsea to figure that out. She's dancing around the screen right now. No, <laughs> no we are, we are good guys. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can shut you, off you the pull, slides. You can pull and... those slides off. So, I don't know. I think, Barb, we don't like to complicate things, but at least it's a deeper dive, right? And so it is good that we have the, the chance to kind of share a little bit deeper so people get a better understanding because it is, it is difficult out there to navigate your way through what should I use, what shouldn't I use, why should I use it, what's different about this compared to that. It's very noisy out there. And, Very. and so, and, and then with, you know, with online, with everyone becoming experts, it's very interesting um, as well. And so you hear some things, whoa, you know, is that real? And so this is just, this is there. This is a product that we did to help people. You know, our goal is to always prevent first, let the body do what it's capable of more on its own or with the right supplementation, food, habits, whatever, to kind of put things back to where, it's more ideal, right? We're trying to, yeah. we're trying to be as, you know, I always tell people, I don't know how you feel. I know how I feel before I started changing my lifestyle of, of health. And that was in my early thirties or whatever it was mid, I don't know when it was, but at 60, I feel amazing. And I didn't feel amazing in my thirties and I didn't feel amazing in my thirties. And all of a sudden, as I went on sort of this whole journey, even before I changed my food, I, I felt pretty dang good because I was getting the right nutrients all of a sudden, right? And processing things better and absorbing things better. You know, and it could be that one little thing, that one little nutrient that you can't absorb or you're not consuming or that, you know, that mineral that does this, that, and the other. Or you're consuming it and your parasites are stealing it. Yeah, they're stealing <laughs> it, man. What's up with that? So, but we appreciate Barb just allowing us to share and do this. This is what we get excited about. Yes to help people help themselves and help others that they, you know, they, they care about or don't even know. And our product line is designed 